Merry Bowl season, everyone. I'm Brett Gibbons with TheLines.com, and today we're breaking down the Goodyear Cotton Bowl between Tulane and USC. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the Lines YouTube channel as we're here breaking down all 41 bowl games and the national championship game this postseason. The Cotton Bowl. USC favored by two points over Tulane. This one kicks Monday, January 2nd at 1 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. It's got an over-under of about 62 points. You can find on either side of that. Uh, this one played in Jerry World, AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, one of the premier facilities uh, that hosts a bowl game in the country. If you're looking at Caleb Williams, Heisman winner Caleb Williams, he got really hurt. Hamstring, I believe the issue was in the Pac-12 championship game. He's probably going to play. He's on track to play. Uh, how healthy he is is uh, to be determined. But USC is also down a few other uh, pieces. Center Brett Nielsen, starting center. He was a third-team All-American selection. He's done. Uh, He suffered a severe injury in the Pac-12 championship game. He will not play here. Andrew Voorhees, he missed the end of the season with an injury. He's a first-team All-American selection. He won't play in this game either. And they're sliding a guard over to the center position to fill in for Nielsen. So they're actually going to be playing with two reserve guards and a different center, even if he is a starter. And I would assume... Uh, pretty experienced snapping the football if they're moving him over there. Uh, they're also without prolific wide receiver Jordan Addison and a starting linebacker's out for USC. So they're really down. Um, easy on the other side. Tulane, down nobody. They're all in. Uh, why wouldn't you be? If, if you're a Tulane Green Wave player or a coach and you get an opportunity to play or coach in the, in the Cotton Bowl, why on earth would you skip out? So no one has. Good to see that. This line opened at USC minus four and a half and it dropped quickly. Uh, that was a, it was a, a, off market number, I suppose the rest of the market uh, deemed. And I, th- I thought initially it might have been in response to Caleb Williams's injury, but it just didn't rebound. So I really think that uh, the market is is really heavily in on Tulane, at least at the earlier numbers. Uh, has not continued to move. Uh, really, there's not much room to move now. You can even find a one and a half, I believe, floating around out there for USC. So. Uh, and I just, I don't see Tulane being favored in this game. I really think it's all going to come down to how healthy Caleb Williams is. Uh, that That's not breaking news. It's not earth shattering information. Um, USC has the obvious talent advantage I, despite their losses. They're, they're trotting out four and five uh, star receivers out there in a matchup against three stars that Tulane is not to say that Tulane's players aren't good or talented. They very much are. But if you're just looking on paper, at rosters, USC has a clear talent advantage. Uh, no, no big deal, or no surprise there. But they're not really built well inside. So their offensive line had problems, and their defense everywhere has problems. So they're they have stars at the uh, skill positions, but the foundational pieces to their uh, team just isn't quite there. We saw that all season long. Tulane's defense does not give up big plays. They're seventh nationally in 20 or more yard plays allowed. 14th in pro football focuses coverage grade. The secondary just overall is outstanding, even though they have those, like I said, three star guys. They've developed into outstanding players. I do believe they have the talent and the skill to be able to run with most of what USC is able to trot out there, especially since Jordan Addison is not playing. They also have a very talented defensive line as well. Um, just based on the the conference that they played and so, some of the offenses that they played. They don't have like gaudy numbers, uh, but their defensive line is very talented, very stout. And Tulane's offense, it runs through Ty J Spears. He's outstanding. Michael Pratt's a great quarterback, but it's been the Ty J Spears show. Uh, he has seven straight games of 120 or more rushing yards. And good news, USC's defense is 126th in EPA uh, per rush allowed. So th- he is going to be able to find success. Just like I said, USC's defense, uh, especially up front, not very good. I do believe Ty J Spears is, is going to have himself uh, a good stat padding day, if nothing else. Um, Tulane's also very good on early downs. They're 11th nationally in early down EPA. USC is 118th on defense. So there's a big thing there. And then once USC does get their opponents in a third and fourth down, they're not good at stopping them either. It's 123rd, third and fourth down success rate. So they are giving up conversions even when they are able to get stops on first and second down, which uh, isn't typical of them. So I think Tulane's offense is going to be able to score points here no matter how you dice it. If you're looking at the motivation nod, it's Tulane by a comfortable margin. Uh, that's not groundbreaking information either, but Tulane is more excited to be in this game. They're probably more likely to play harder than USC. I'm not going to say they are going to. Um, I'm not removing the agency from USC, but they are more likely to play a harder, more uh, excited game, I suppose, than USC is. But I do think both points are or both teams are going to be able to score their points. So 
Uh, and USC, their turnover luck, their turnover margin, their turnover rate, however you want to dice it, is through the roof. And it just kind of never stopped this year. They're 74, they're, they're recovering 74% of fumbles. That is uh, first nationally. That number should be close to 50 because you don't know, you know, the ball bouncing is random, but it's been very, very fortunate for USC. Fumble recovery percentage is a very good indicator of turnover luck because interceptions can be forced. Even fumbles can be forced. But who dives on that ball? Who's there? How it bounces? Does it go out? But like all these weird kind of random things should have your fumble recovery percentage around 50%, but we're talking about 74% for USC. That's been the deal all year is their turnover luck has just been through the roof. Um, Good news though. Tulane doesn't really turn the ball over or good news for Tulane. I should say Uh, they don't really turn the ball over. So if you're looking at USC and they're forcing a lot of turnovers, USC is probably going to run away with this game, but Tulane takes pretty good care of the football. So if you're going to bet Tulane, I would consider a money line play. I wouldn't try to take plus two, plus two and a half, whatever you can get there. I, I would just throw it on the money line. And I would also give a look to over their 30 and a half points, because if they're going to beat USC, it's going to be by outscoring them. I don't believe it's going to be a, a low scoring struggle. Like when they beat Kansas state 17, 10 earlier in the year. And if you're going to beat USC, I would consider over the point total as a whole, 62 points again, because I don't think that this is going to be a 24, 17 uh, match, no, no matter how it shakes out, whether Tulane or, or USC wins. So I think if USC wins, again, it's going to be outscoring Tulane. Uh, I wouldn't bet over USC's team total. I'd probably just take over the point total in general. Um, so this is kind of a choose your own adventure uh, video. Tulane, I would take them on the money line. I would take over the 30 and a half points. But if you're on USC and you're more convinced there, I would take them and I would take over uh, the point total of 62. Hop on over to our Discord server where you can connect with over 4,000 sports betting fans and get live updates in our college football server, opt-outs, transfers, anything you need to know to successfully navigate the rest of bowl season. And we'll even have some, you know, we'll have championship talk, plenty of that, and we'll have some uh, preps for next season as as that kind of gets closer. If you go over and click on the hashtag rolls channel and drop an emoji under my name, you'll start to get my live bowl bets all December long. You don't have to rely on these videos that are stagnant. Uh, You're getting the best numbers as we see them off market numbers last minute before bowls start numbers as, as the markets shift on things. But join the Discord. It's an awesome community, very knowledgeable people. Uh, And again, you can get my live bowl bets sent straight to your phone via notification. But don't forget to subscribe to Align's YouTube channel for daily bowl videos just like this one and comment what side you lean in the Cotton Bowl. This is a big one. This is an exciting one. I think Tulane's going to be a really popular, at least root for team, uh, as they're kind of the underdog here against Big Bad USC. But let me know down in the comments. Let me know on Twitter at Road to CFB. But thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'm Brett Gibbons, and have a very merry bowl season.